Hi guys, this week we just launched our new mini May collection for Sweet Georgia. And the collection is called Freshly Squeezed and all four pieces are designed by our design director, Tabitha Hedrick. So there's this piece and this piece and this one and the one behind me. And I wanted to bring Tabitha onto the vlog today to have a conversation about what her inspiration was behind this collection and a little bit more about each one of these pieces. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I am Felicia from Sweet Georgia Yarns. We're a hand-dyed knitting yarn company based in Vancouver in Canada. And today is gonna to be a little bit different from how we normally do these vlogs. Generally, it's just you and me and we're talking about you know things that I happen to be knitting and things like that. But this week, what we wanna do is we wanna talk about the collection that we just launched. It's just a four, four piece, very, very small collection that just happens in the springtime. We call it Mini May. And so Tabitha, our design director, she's the designer of these four pieces and usually when we do these sort of collection launches I will have uh, Tabitha join me for a conversation on our podcast on our audio podcast but we thought you know it makes more sense to actually show these things in real life and it makes more sense to have Tabitha talk about them and so I hope that you guys will join me for our conversation today. So welcome you guys we're going to try something completely new and different today we are going to try having Tabitha, our design director, on at the same time. And we're going to talk about this new collection that we just released this past week. And this has been a little bit, um, this is different than usual, because in the past, we've had Tabitha on the podcast. And we, you know, uh, have a conversation about all the pieces that come out in the collection. We do that in an audio format. But then thinking about that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense since, you know, these pieces are obviously physical, <laughs> tangible things with color and all sorts of stuff like that. And so it makes more sense to be able to talk about it and show you at the same time. I could talk about it myself, which I have done on the vlog before, you know, just shown each piece and things like that. But because Tabitha is the designer of all four pieces in this particular collection, it would make sense to have Tabitha talk about the pieces just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for letting me. <laughs> This is going to be Tabitha's first time on our YouTube channel, like her actual face. Yeah. Well, th we had the video when I was visiting Vancouver, but that wasn't like a planned, like, let's sit down and face to face talk. That was just snippets of me being ridiculous. Yeah. And I think that next time we're going to have to do that. That was kind of like in the back of my mind. I thought, oh, you know, could we shoot a vlog and you come and sit in the attic with me? That would be super fun. But then it was just a crazy crazy win a couple days so that didn't happen yeah we had to cram too many things in too many yeah, things too many things so but then I think if you guys have been on the YouTube channel and seen some of those tutorials that we've put together some of the knitting tutorials all of that is Tabitha's hands doing the knitting <laughs> and then I do the voiceover <laughs> so it's like this Frankenstein you know knitter person <laughs> multi-faceted teamwork is that's it right is. it's called teamwork <laughs> I only look like Frankenstein with my headphones. <laughs> I have. Oh, <laughs> mine, mine stick out like this and literally look like I have nails in my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us about what did we launch this past week? We launched what I fondly behind the scenes call our mini May collection. It's just four little pieces that I have been inspired by something and I wanted to put a tiny thing out there for the world to see. And this one is called Fresh Squeezed. Um, and it came because I was inspired by a picture of a lemonade stand. Who knew? that it would lead me on such a, a path of summer and mornings and juice shops and bright blue skies with giant balloons in the air. And it just took me down this image pathway. And I was just so inspired to create four little pieces that kind of hit, hit all those little, those little nuggets of summer. Did you say lemonade shop or lemonade stand? Lemonade stand. Is what lemonade I stand. Meant. I have verbal dyslexia <laughs> oh I was just like wow if somebody went out there like actually opened a lemonade shop that, that could be, be really, really fun, fun. Yeah, like there's all be... these artisan there's... ice cream places the artisan yeah. lemonade stands well, smoothie. <laughs> smoothie shops are big here in the U.S. I don't know about in, in Vancouver but 
smoothie shops are really big here and juice shops seem to be growing. Yeah, so we live in uh, Richmond, so it's just outside of Vancouver and down in Steveston, which is like the furthest possible that you can go um, in Steveston. It's kind of like a little fishing village area. And there was a smoothie shop that opened last July. And then this past year, there's also been another shop called the Juice Truck. And so they're kind of a chain, but the, the guys who own the Juice Truck, they are originally from Steveston. And then they started to open juice shops all over Vancouver. And so we shot the photos for the collection at one of the Juice Truck shops. We shot it in one of the Vancouver shops. Yeah, they're so fun. <laughs> they are so fun. And it just, the, the bright color and bright juicy fruit, it's just, it's perfect. It's perfect. And so I hope, well, my hope is, is that these four pieces kind of take you into that little bit of feeling of, uh, I don't know, that summer comfort, easy breezy. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So tell us about maybe the pieces, uh, basically like the first one that we're showing right now is the cover uh the cover of the collection is yes. the cover piece that I am wearing right now yes uh, it's called dancy uh-huh. and let me back up all, all four of the pieces are named well three of the pieces are named after actually one of them the lemon drop might all are named after citrus fruit so dancy I believe is a type of tangerine <laughs> so it worked out well since I used tangerine as the yarn color <laughs> So that's Dancy that Felicia is modeling. Side note, I have to send all my pieces into Vancouver, and that's why Felicia has them all, because she used them for photos, and they'll use them in the shop for samples and to show off. And so I don't get to have any in person to show off. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, we used flax and silk fine uh, for it. It is worked in the round from the bottom up till you get to the armholes and then you'll divide for the front and back. And what I particularly like about this piece is that there is no seaming whatsoever, unless you want to. The shoulders are shaped with short row shaping and then you just, and then there's buttonholes at the top. And so you just button the top. You could optionally seam the shoulders and just sew the buttons on for, uh, to complete the look. But I just love that there's zero seaming in this thing. Very nice. It's actually really comfortable. It fits really nicely. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I, I love the fit. I love, and if you want next to skin yarn for your summer, you can't go any better than the flax and silk fine. It is just dreamy to wear all mm-hmm. warm season long. Yeah, actually from the previous collection, there was the the Grotto Nymph, which is also like a tank that was designed by Holly Yo, And mm-hmm. that one, I think, was knit in the Bulletproof sock. Yes, that's a, yeah. Yeah, but I think some of the girls at uh, at the studio, they knit it in the flax and silk fine to wear uh-huh. it, you know, for spring and summertime yeah. because, you know, the linen content and the silk content, it's going to be a little bit more lighter, a little bit more breathable. It's not right. wool. It's not going to keep you all like... Uh, and it's still yeah. so soft with the silk in there. You don't have the pure crunch of the linen against your skin. You have that. It's, it's dreamy. It's dreamy. <laughs> so... <laughs> Tell us about the other garment that is sort of next in the queue here. I have it behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Behind you. That's Ponderosa. Again, another, uh, I believe that is a lemon, um, a lemon, a lemon fruit name. Um, But the cardigan is just an easy open cardigan that you can layer on top of any cute little summer dress over jeans tank top it's just really really easy and it is also if i recall it's been about eight months since i knit it (laughs) so i have to recall but it is um i think that one was worked flat and then seam. So it's raglan shaping up here and the front borders are worked along with the uh, body of the cardigan yeah. until you get to here and then you'll work those and sew those up. Yeah, so the I rest like of those are along the back. But it's a nice easy little chevron lace pattern that just gives it a little bit of pop. Mm-hmm. It lets the color do the talking. I love this color. This is my favorite color. I am a huge fan of Beach House. I feel like it goes with everything it does i think it does <laughs> i hope i don't sound too biased when i say that but it really is just like that perfect grab a sweater when you're going into a cool restaurant kind of party yeah perfect 
Nice. And this one was knit in the superwash super DK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my aim. Now, what and else? All, I try to aim all of my garments to have about seven sizes. So it, it should fit a, a broad range of body shapes. So, mm -hmm. And I think it suits everybody's personality as well. It's just a light, like a shoulder cover sort of thing and just toss it on yep. after dinner, that kind of thing, going out for a walk. I like that. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so we have one that you were knitting when you came to visit us in Vancouver. Yes. And we um, blocked it on my floor in my office. <laughs> With a picture of Nina in the background looking at it like, why are you doing this and not spending time with me? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> It's one of my favorite pictures. I actually have a computer. <laughs> Tabitha kept texting me. She's like, can you like take measurements of it and draw a schematic? And... I'm like, I forgot to take uh, the finished blocking gauge since you blocked it for me. Well, I, this shawl was an experiment. It's called Lisbon's and that is a lemon fruit in case you guys were a type of lemon. Um, it's two colors. And if you hold your finger, up towards the top of the first yarn over at the very end of the mango. Um, you're casting on here and usually it's it's like an asymmetrical shawl where you have um, a paired decrease and an increase and then usually another increase that's either worked on one side or the other side. So you're always working on two decreases or I mean two increases and one decrease within a two row series in an asymmetrical shawl. It gives it that kind of curved asymmetrical shape. Mm -hmm. So this one was an experiment where I decided to take the increase um, that shapes the shawl and makes it grow and move it so that it created that first concave um, island, a row mm -hmm. of islands yeah. uh, until I got to the end. And then I started back at the beginning as I got a little farther along and then moved that yarn over. And so every time I got oh, to the end, I okay. go back over, back to the beginning and move the yarn over down. So it was a bit of an experiment and it reminded me of wedges of citrus. Mm -hmm. And so I kept going with it and it creates this really unique kind of shawl shape that is still an asymmetrical shawl. You just with these wonderful wedges uh so i'm 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 really digging this particular shawl it wraps really really well like a scarf but it wears nicely like a shawl um and just ended with a, a very simple lovely little lace and it's a great project project where you can use up all of your yarn yeah you could just keep going at the end because yeah. there's this little bit of lace and i don't know how much yeah. yarn was left over at the end but you could just that keep going just the last little bit of lace yeah or last that little lace. bit of color mm -hmm. yeah and we used mango ice which is a variegated one of our splashy variegated uh That's and so paired sweet. it with clementine uh so at first glance you're all like that kind of pink with that kind of yellow i'm not sure but it just uh it just spoke citrus and summer to me so it just it's one of my favorite pieces this is actually really fun and interesting because it's another way of looking at shawl structure and shawl yeah. design, shawl construction, because, yeah. you know, there's a lot, there's been a lot of those kinds of constructions that are the asymmetrical shawl that's really, really super popular right now. But then this is taking it kind of like another step and yeah. Yeah, it's changing just, it up and it's making just it a bit different. Moving the, in, the, moving the, the increase part of it so that it just shapes a little bit differently that was it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then also really easy to remember obviously because once it you is. get to the end then you just start again yep. and then you just, start just again yep you just move your marker and follow that yarn over back down so theoretically if you wanted to make a super humongous one you could also add another third color Keep and then just adding go more yarn in. yeah <laughs> and make a blanket <laughs> <laughs> exactly love this but yeah, it just, it wears just so nicely. Like I just, I love the, I just love the wedge kind of shape of it. It wears great. Mm -hmm. And so you can take those two colors and you can mix them together and then they make this kind of blended section in the middle. You could choose colors that are more similar, make it more subdued, right. neutrals. I could see it even in like, you know, gray and black or something like that. Oh yeah. That could yeah. You can, and that would give it a really cool, almost gradient effect. Oh, I would think this yeah. is knit in the tough love sock, right? Yep. So One you could easily use like two, get two packs of, I would say two packs because one pack is 525 yards and one skein of tough love is 425. So two packs of a party of five and even 
mix and match those so that you have 10 colors that would be so cool to do i think in fact i might need to do that (laughs) that could be really cool i could see one in you know like that voyage one which is that the blues the the Mm -hmm. navy blues and then one that's like the purples and then do the blues and the purples both from the lights all to the darks yeah or yeah or taking like the gray one with one of the candy colored ones that would be really cool to try to blend those as well that, i can see lots of things with that we might need to get some <laughs> <might> made. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. yeah um see this is how the magic happens people brainstorm network ideas pop yeah i think i was telling you um over email or something about how like in the next two weeks I have my kids every day and I have to find something to knit where I don't have to like pay too much attention to what I'm actually doing so something like this which is you know it's garter yeah lots of garter but still just enough interest to keep you going you know with the changing yarn over but it's easy to track you know yeah that would be a good one Cool. And you could do the party of five, so you'd be my my new sample knitter. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have some at home upstairs. I think you do somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> now tell me about this last piece here. The last piece, they, I had this uh, German. It's called lemon drop, which I think is a lemon type of fruit. But I was particularly I think enchanted. It's also an with. alcoholic beverage. Uh, I'm all about that. <laughs> I was thinking of the candy. <laughs> um, but I had this German stitch pattern book that ha- and a-, a lot of my German stitch pattern books, they have these stitch patterns that are really wide open. They utilize multiple yarn overs to create these amazing sunburst looking effects, mm. just like that. Yeah. Um, and so I just was so inspired by that stitch. And it's kind of a complicated stitch just in that you have your stitch count changes every row. So I wanted some way I could use it, but without it being overwhelming. So you could take this particular the border of this shawl, which is just a rectangular stole, and you work it in two halves and then graft it in the middle. Um, so you could work just one repeat of that just to grow your skills. You could work more repeats of that particular lace. Um, be, and then, so it was just those, and they led into an easy transition of just the yellow and then blended with the white. Very similar um, uh, color use as what was in um, the Lisbon's shawl. So you go from yellow to yellow and white and into the white. Um, so it really is a super, super simple pattern, but gives you just enough punch there to grow your skills and break out of your boundaries a little bit. Very nice. Looks yeah, good. and everybody loves a good rectangular stole. Yeah, yeah. again, easy knitting. <laughs> something quick and easy to make during the during the summer. This one happens to be made out of the bulletproof sock. Yes, it does. Yeah, it, yeah. Does. it has mm-hmm. very nice sort of stitch definition for sure. A beautiful stitch definition and really it has just enough of that sheen to it. So really the yellow really pops on it with that, just that hint of mohair in there. It gives it not a sheen, not a shimmer. I don't know how to classify it. Uh, So it has a a beautiful definition to the colorways and a beautiful drape. Love it. Love it. We had such a good time doing that photo shoot. Our, uh, our model was Jessica, and um, usually we have uh, Josh. He does a lot of photography from us for, for every collection, Josh Young, and he does fantastic, gorgeous, beautiful photographs. But for, oh my gosh, he was like out of town <laughs> when we had to film this. Why does he have to be so popular? Heaven forbid. Know. Yeah, he was back in Why? Asia. He's like, what? Why is he not here? So I had to photograph um, this collection and the two spring collections, which is, Mm -hmm. you know, it's fun, but it's also very, um, uh, uh, makes me very nervous. (laughs) Not exhausting. It was fun, but it just made me really super nervous. It's exhausting. Well, it's not even Mentally, mentally exhausting. You have to wear so many hats because you're looking at the scene as a photographer, but then you still need to be able to look at it editorially, you know, how is the, how's the 
the fit in the drape? Am I showing what I need to show? Mm -hmm. How's the styling? So uh, being the photographer and still that editorial perspective, it's really hard to balance the two. And then you have to go into photo editing. Um, and so, so yeah, it's really nice when Josh can shoot for us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just so that we can do that editorial aspect. Uh, well, but you thank did gosh. A He's back. He's back job. now. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I mean, beautiful. I love it. I love it. Thank They're you. so well, fun and lucky. airy. And I think the photography really hits on that carefree, easy breezy vibe that I was looking for. So. <laughs> no, it was good. I, I don't think you can tell that it was like actually a quite a gray, almost rainy day in Vancouver when we shot these. And it's probably pretty good because the lighting was better because it wasn't super, super strong. It was pretty diffuse lighting and we shot mostly by this big window in the ju juice truck place. Um, they had a bunch of lights which were a little bit weird. So I feel like some of the lighting made it look a little bit artificial in some ways. Plus they have that minty green background and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. I, we had a really great time. Leah also came and she joined me on the shoot and she was kind of like, you know, helping check for bra straps and hair and things <laughs> like that. And um, yeah, definitely helping a lot. And uh, I think I it's really interesting. <laughs> we, we all got juice. We all got okay. smoothies. <laughs> but I think one of the nice things that Leah was saying, because she came on all three shoots was that um, you know, she'd mentioned about how she'd always found or she'd always envisioned that models were maybe a little bit um, intimidating or, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But she met these three girls and they were all such strong and smart women who were like going to school, they were studying, they, you know, had like very bright futures and all these kinds of things. And she's just like, and they just happened to be really gorgeous people and <laughs> nice and I think she found it very um a little bit empowering to see you know good. women who were you know very positive feeling it's good about like their futures see, um, yeah um, what was that old show um uh, America's Next Top Model it's not like that <laughs> Yeah, my experience with models has been the same, like uh, whether I was uh, working with creative knitting for the special interest in issue that I edited and working with the professional models and photographers there, I, I hate using the word professional, but these are women that are contracted through an agency. Uh, and the same thing, like they're going to school, they're very mm -hmm. capable, strong women, they just happen to really like being able to be in front of a camera and good at it major props to them because i am so not that <laughs> <laughs> uh, so i'm really glad that they're there to do their job <laughs> yeah it takes a certain level of comfort you know for it sure yeah. yeah especially in a public place like jessica doing photos with strangers coming in and out of the shop and people driving by that takes a real certain level of gravitas or confidence <laughs> you know um yeah. that is really inspiring yeah yeah so what are you working on these days what am i working on <laughs> like it's a short list um I but it's have... like everything is a secret we can't tell anybody anything oh i could tell them everything they <laughs> They just can't see it yet because it's all downstairs anyway <laughs> by my knitting table. Um, I have the uh, a pullover I'm working on for fall, winter. I have a shawl for uh, an individual pattern coming out. Um, oh my gosh, it's a long list. I'm working on a new sock pattern for our sample it kits for T and and a if you're coming, yarn shoppers. Uh, we have a fun uh, sock pattern using Party of Five. Uh, I'm finished. Actually, I just finished that up. Uh, we're finishing photos and patterns right now. Um, oh my gosh. I'm working on a mystery show. Could there be another mystery <laughs> knit along in the future? I will not say. <laughs> um, and then, so right now we are basically just finishing up all of the knitting for fall winter collection coming out because the, that deadline comes up in, I think, two, two and a half weeks, maybe a week and a half. Um, and so all those samples will start coming in, all the patterns will start coming in and I'm gonna start writing copy and forwarding to tech editors and getting down into the nitty gritty of our next collection. 
Mm-hmm. 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 And yesterday, yesterday, we were talking on Slack yeah. about colors for yes, for our Advent season coming up again. Yes, that's going to yes. be super fun. So we're planning that again and tossing around some ideas and colors and yarns and what we're going to do. And but that's how early we have to work. <laughs> yes. I vote for sparkle. That's my vote. <laughs> I want all the sparkle. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, thank you. Um... I think that's it. <laughs> you showed it all off. Now you're all wrapped up in it. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to keep wearing this today. It's like... <sighs> One of these days, I'll get to keep a sample. <laughs> when, when... You can wear it when you go to TNNA. <laughs> That's what Teresa keeps saying. You can wear it when you come to the next show. That's but then right. you have to give it back. <laughs> Good. Well, thank well, you thanks. so much, Tabitha. All these four pieces look amazing. We are excited to be able to launch it this past week. And we hope you guys out there who are maybe watching this find at least one of these. Uh, something that you might want to add to your knitting basket this summer. Something easy right. and breezy. Something light. Something fun to knit. Yeah. Something colorful. Yeah, I enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tabitha. So that is it for our conversation. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you like this episode, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more content from us, please do hit subscribe and you will be notified when new videos go up every week. If you also want to be notified about when new updates or new collections or new patterns or new products launch from Sweet Georgia, I highly encourage you guys to visit our website, sweetgeorgiayarns.com and sign up for our newsletter there and you will get all the information about everything that we are doing. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I would like to do a little giveaway for this collection. So if you guys are interested in winning a copy of this ebook collection, please do click the link below and you'll be taken to a form where you can fill in your information and sign up for our newsletter. And we will do a draw in two weeks to see who will get that ebook. Thank you guys so much for watching and I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.